morning. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? All right, all right. How is everyone? Good, good. All right. All right, give me a moment here, we'll get started. Let me just get uh, the screen ready. Where is my... Good, there we go. Okay, so let's get started here. Now it's 7.34 p.m. my time, it's 6.34 a.m. New York City time. Is my voice clear? Can everyone hear me? Or do I need to adjust it uh, higher or lower? You know, what's the situation? Sounds fine? Okay, good, good, good. If there's any issues, let me know and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, how many of you guys are new here? Yeah, background noise, I'm actually... Um, my house, um, doing this out of my house, and it's downtown, so lots of noise outside. Okay, Malik, Ken, Bert, Gopi. Okay, welcome, welcome. Okay, so um, welcome to all the new members who have recently joined Urban Forex, and also those of you who are new, um, maybe not at Urban Forex, but maybe to my webinars. Okay, we do webinars weekly, usually on Wednesdays. Um, it's either going to be me speaking or it's some uh, other analyst or maybe a good trader from Urban Forex who actually you know, wants to try um, doing speaking in webinars and sharing his methods. So we have one every Wednesday and uh, today's topic is pro trading strategies. This is one of the uh, most popular strategies of mine that's on the internet. Um, again, five star rated all across uh, every forum out there, and the YouTube videos has massive amount of likes and everything. So, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please do go ahead and like on the bottom and share your feedback. I hope the audio on this one doesn't go bad halfway through, like the previous webinar. Um, we're getting that fixed. Um, okay, so. How many of you guys have uh, not heard of pro trading strategy at all? I mean, I know some of you guys are new here, but how many of you have not heard of pro trading strategy ever before? Okay, Will. Looks like there's a few of you guys, Sir Dude, Malik, and Gopi. Okay, so we have a few people. Okay. What we're going to do today, we're going to start with the very basics of pro trading strategy. I want to spend 15 minutes onto that, and then we're going to spend the rest of the time recapping. And then towards the end, what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you guys um, some ways to refine it. Okay, um, Many of you guys have probably seen the video I've recently posted onto Urban Forex, which is um, about this young kid who has autism, and he simply tells you to stop learning. Um, for a moment sometimes in your life and start thinking okay if you start learning doesn't matter what you're doing you're gonna follow the trend when you stop and you think you will come up with things that is not taught you know you will come up with new concepts new ideas this is how innovation begins all right so let's go into <clears throat> uh, the basics to begin with here Okay, pro trading strategy works very well with what we call um, exhaustion candles. Exhaustion candles are pretty much candles. Um, many of you guys may know it as pin bars. Many of you guys may know it as hammers, inverted hammers, and stuff like that. What is an exhaustion candle? It's something similar to this. Let me find you a textbook example. Uh, Lars, no, you didn't miss anything. Let me find you... A proper example for you to show you guys okay here we go this is what we call an exhaustion okay take a look how the trend is on its way up 
and then this candle opens up it goes really high all the way up to here and it gets pushed back down all the way down back again and it closes near the open okay this big little stick that you see here is what we call a tail okay it has a tail on one side on the other side very nominal indicating there is a lot of pressure pushing it down from the top okay it tried to go long but then it pushed it back down so think of it that way what does this indicate it indicates a trend reversal okay it means there is a strong level of support or resistance above this level that's pushing it down there's a lot of players uh, in the market that is um, pushing this down now give me a second here what is this okay so there's, there's a lot of players that are are, um, are pushing this trade down so what actually happens is uh, you have an exhaustion there are some criterias uh, Dino will look at the live markets and everything all the way at the end let's uh, stick to all the questions towards the end so nobody gets lost and confused in between questions and answers um, alright now if we take a look at this exhaustion you need four criterias to match up with this criteria number one the exhaustion must form in a trend okay if it's not coming from a trend, it's not an exhaustion. You cannot have a trend reversal if there is no trend. Okay, there is no sideways reversal. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Step number two, criteria number two. The exhaustion candle's tail needs to stick out. You see this big tail right here? You see all this open space onto the left? Okay. It has all this open space here onto the left, which indicates this is visible from a distance you don't need to actually sit here and use a microscope to see this you can see it from halfway across your room and say like ah take a look at that there's a big tail sticking out okay now step number three the exhaustion candle itself must be bigger than the previous candle indicating the current candle that had the exhaustion pushed really hard Compared to the last candle, there suddenly su sudden strength came into the market, and then it went away. Why? Okay, indicating a trend reversal. Condition number four. The exhaustion candle's body, it must be within the previous high and low. Okay, remember how, uh, concentrate on what I'm saying the body of the exhaustion candle must be within the previous high and low so the entire previous candle not just the previous body okay four conditions um will uh when we're talking about the trend we're talking about immediate trends okay if you're looking at exhaustion here we're talking about this trend if you're looking at exhaustion up here we're talking about this green trend right here where you have higher highs or um i'm sorry higher lows or lower highs okay you see how there's a low here and then the next low is up here the next low is up here the next low is up here this is an indication of a trend okay same scenario happens here this is a downtrend you have a high then a lower high then a lower high and a lower high so on and so forth that is what you call a downtrend okay so we have all this criteria four criteria whichever criteria is wrong the entire exhaustion is wrong there is no order for these four criteria. okay let's go over them one more time criteria number one okay you must have a trend when the exhaustion is formed criteria number two the exhaustion candles tail must stick out it should be visible clearly visible there must be empty black space next to it okay Criteria number three, the exhaustion candle has to be bigger than the previous candle. And finally, criteria number four, the exhaustion candle's body must be within the previous high and low. Okay, if you put an air, a line here, there's the high of last candle, here's the low of last candle. 
Is the body inside this high and low? Yes. This makes it valid. Okay, this gives you an indication that the trend is going to turn around. Now, so considering those steps in mind, is this a proper exhaustion? No. One of the criteria are not matching. In this particular case, the previous candle is has extreme pressure. Yeah, the previous candle is too big. It has extreme pressure. Chances are this extreme pressure may continue. You can have a slight movement, but the pressure may continue. This is why we look at these criteria. Okay? Here we go. Another situation. Is this correct? No. Okay. Moving forward. Is this correct? Okay. No. And last one. Is this correct? Also no. Now, these things are, it just keeps you safe if you're avoiding these things. Now, whenever you have an exhaustion candle, usually a trade works in your favor almost instantaneously. Okay, this because it indicates the market has a strong reversal coming up. All right, now take a look at. Uh, well, how about this? Is this correct? There's a tricky one. No. The body is not inside the previous high and low. Also makes it incorrect. Okay, because as you can see, if you were to enter short at the next candle, if you were to enter sell, considering that the market's going to turn around, um, as the market actually goes up, many people start to freak out. They start to get scared, like, oh no, it's going long, you know, and so on and so forth. And then people tend to worry. So it keeps you safe if you keep to the criteria. Okay? Another thing to always keep in mind. How about this one? What do you think? Okay, yes, no, no. It's equal. Okay, you see how we have mixed responses? Yes and no's and question marks and everything? Concept to always follow in any strategy, in anything you do in, uh, in trading with it, when it comes to investments. When in doubt, don't touch it. If it's not clear enough for you, it's not clear enough to take the trade. Don't touch it. Remember that concept. Anything you do with money, if it's not clear to you, don't mess with it. All right. So you leave that trade alone as well. All right. Now, moving forward. We everyone okay with the exhaustion candles? Everyone understands what is a proper exhaustion candle, what is not? Yes? Can we get a yes? How about this one? Take a look at this. How about this? Is this an exhaustion candle? quite clear light it sticks out in front of your face that whoa it's in an uptrend we have this massive tail that sticks out okay previous it's in uh, the, this candle is bigger than the previous candle also the body is inside the high and the low of the last candle the body is bigger than the tail on the bottom as well indicating one-sided the tail is one-sided Massive pressure pushing it down. The next candle, when you short, very little does it ever go against you. It almost instantaneously, instantaneously goes in your favor. This indicates there is a massive amount of pressure coming in into the market to sell. Okay, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. I'll get into everything. Entry, exit, stops, everything. But one at a time. All right. So, we got our exhaustions down, right? Everyone's okay with exhaustions? Everyone understands the concept now? Okay, great. Let's move on. Now, what I'm going to teach you guys is another technique. 
Okay, a lot of the things I like to teach is different from the traditional methods because the traditional methods, honestly, is it's made for the traditional people and the traditional people always lose. That's why 95% of the people lose. Okay, what I'm going to teach you guys here is something different. Okay, how many of you guys know what are pivot points? Okay, Carl, we have all of this stuff on urbanforex.com. Okay, what, what is basically a pivot point? We'll, we'll get into that right now. Let's put up our pivot points on our screen. Let me, I actually have the indicator here. Where is my beloved pivot points? Okay. These, these are our pivot points. Pivot points are basically levels of support and resistance. So that is correct, sir, dude. And will Lee also um, uh, similar. A pivot point is basically yesterday's movement's average. Okay, whatever happened in the market yesterday, the average of that gets plotted out as pivot points. Okay, I'm not going to get into the formulas and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, it's whatever the entire movement is average is your pivot points that are plotted okay pivot points don't change indicators will move as per price pivot points do not move they're static okay now so many lines Dino what what you're asking me is the average the exact average is this one the blue line which is called the pivot and then above that is the resistance one resistance two resistance three below that is support one support two, support three, so on and so forth. Now, one thing I'm going to teach you guys about pivot points is the traditional books will tell you if your market is above the pivot points, don't sell. Some books will tell you if the market is above your pivot line, don't, uh, don't buy, only look to sell. Okay, my concept is out of this world. Remove all these words, nothing to look at there. All you need to focus on is these lines are walls. Okay, can everyone repeat after me? These lines are walls, nothing but walls. Can everyone say walls? Okay, good. This is nothing but walls, remember that. Okay, what is a wall? It's something that tries to stop you. You can't really just walk through a wall, right? So. Let's look at this concept. Let's go back to our one hour chart. I recommend always trading this on the one hour charts. Okay. Now the traditional books tells you everything about around the pivot point, buying, selling, this and that all around it. Forget that. I'm going to tell you one thing. When you're dealing with pivot points, look for three days worth of information. The current day, the previous day, and the day before that. Okay? Everyone with me so far? Three days, yes, yeah, it's, it's enough. No, no need to worry about that. Three days is enough. Okay? So, remember that concept, three days. Now, let me, let me show you something really neat here. All right, let's uh, keep our markets here. Okay, so let's assume this is current day. This is previous day. This is the day before. If the pivot points, the way we're taught, we the markets are going long, it comes down, it bounces off this area. Very good, bounces off this wall, goes long, breaks through this wall with a strong strength. It never reaches up here. It halts right here. Why? You need to take into factor your previous day's pivot lines also. These walls, they have strength in them. Okay? The market breaks through above this area. Why? Why does it halt here? Why doesn't it go up to the next level and stop there? It's almost like magic. Okay? Remember always you need to use three days worth of pivot lines That will give you a sense of where the strength is actually lying in the market where you want to Hold or exit your trades accordingly 
Okay? Now, we're going to move even a step further now. Okay. You can take a look at this one, how this market comes down here, stops right here, which is actually a support from the previous day and the day before. You see two lines here, almost side by side, coming in from here. Traps in this market. It never reaches the current day's support, but it reaches the one before. Okay, same over here. Why doesn't it go down till here? It stops here. It's from the day before. Okay, now if any of you guys um, need this pivot line, it's available on Urban Forex. Just in the search on urbanforex.com, just type in uh, pivot point indicator or pivot point indicator as seen on webinar and stuff like that. If you have any issues, ask in the chat room. Everyone, everyone's ready to help you. Um, yes, one hour time frame is ideal for this because your pivot lines, if you use it on the 15 minutes, it gets all messed up. Um, plus you have fundamentals messing with you. If you're using it on the four hours, your pivot points gets too congested, which is like this. And you don't want to be playing with something like this. It's a mess. One hour is the ideal time frame. Sir, dude, it's on urbanforex.com. You can just search for it there on the search bar on the top right and you'll find it. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's move forward. So these walls that we're working with, these levels of support and resistance, these are the walls, right? We're looking, um, these are support and resistance levels, which are telling you that the market are, gets trapped or tries to get trapped in these areas. Now, how do you actually trade these levels? I'm going to show you now. Let me find you an example and then we'll go from there. Of course, uh, right now I'm finding you in uh, a perfect example. So at least you guys can understand the concept. Then we'll go to not so perfect examples. So you know what is a false trade also. All right. Okay. Is this right here an exhaustion candle? Okay, this is an exhaustion candle. Here's why. Here's why. We have a downtrend. Markets in a downtrend. Okay. We have a massive tail. If you actually take the part of the tail that doesn't touch anything, it sticks out all the way to here, all this free space. Next thing. It's bigger than the previous candle. And the body is inside the high and the low of the previous candle. Okay, when you have a pivot, uh, your exhaustion candle, confirm it with uh, your pivot lines. Is it bouncing off a wall? It's bouncing off of today's wall. It's bouncing off of yesterday's wall. And what about the body? Where's the body? Well, it's also bouncing off three days ago. It's right above it. It's a strong area. This gives you confirmation that we are headed long. You open your buy at the very next um, next candle. When the candle is open, you place your buy on the market price. Between your entry to your next level of support or resistance, where is your next wall? Is it up here? Is your next wall up here? The closest one from when you've entered? No, your next level is actually down here. This entire zone from here to here is your guaranteed profit zone. When you've entered long here to here, nothing is going to stop you. Okay, this is your primary target. Okay. Now, the trend um, broken by higher high. Okay, you can't just focus on one candle. You need to look at the picture here. Like, for example, this one. We have, which is the direction for this? For this, uh, things that I've highlighted. Which direction do you think the markets are headed? They're headed up. But what about this? Take a look at this. We have a high here, but the next high is not above this. You know? It doesn't matter. You need to look at the overall picture. What is that thing telling you? It's an uptrend because of the way it looks. 
Same thing here. This thing right here is in a downtrend. Doesn't matter if there are some green candles in between. The movement is a downward movement. Okay, this is your immediate trend. Okay, over here, take a look at this. Uh, next question: Is this a downtrend right here? This is also a downtrend. It's your immediate trend. It's headed down. You know, you try to look at it from a distance. Where are we headed? Okay, this right here, downtrend. We have some ups and downs, but overall it's a downtrend. Okay, if you want to refine it and focus more clearly, you would have a small uptrend here. Okay, so there's there's various ways to look at it. Now the strength here is coming down, and then the strength starts to starts to crumble. We're starting to get tails, which is showing you that there's pressure coming in from the bottom now. People are getting ready to push long. Okay, not just any people. We're talking about larger players. Okay. Does the exhaustion candle always have to be bigger than the previous candle? Yes, because the previous candle is the indication that the market has slowed down. And then your exhaustion candle shows you that the steam is back in the market. But when the steam comes back in the market, the moment this thing pushes down, the average person, what they're doing is they're trading inside candles, this and that and all of that nonsense. And what they're doing is sell, 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 sell everyone starts to sell thinking the trend is actually continuing short when the reality is it's a false breakout and it stops up here giving you an indication that we're not actually going short buddy we're going long okay let's take a look at some more examples okay this was a good example we'll take a look at another good example and then uh, we'll work our way from there okay current day previous day and the day before, three days worth of pivots. Okay, markets come down, boom, exhaustion candle. Yes? Tail very clear, downtrend bigger than the previous candle, body inside the high and the low of the previous candle. Clear to see from, the, from your naked eye, good to spot from halfway away from the room, you can see this. It's bouncing off your pivot lines from here and from here you open your buy at the very next candle. When you have an exhaustion, market rarely goes against you. You can see it went against you probably one pip, and then it goes long. You're headed long. Now, how far are you headed long? What is your guaranteed profit zone? Where is your next line? Your next line, is it this one up here? Your next wall? No. Your next wall is here. Your closest wall seems to be over here. Now, take a look at this. Look at how much congestion there is here. Wall, wall, wall. You're expecting the market to have some sort of reaction around this area. There's so many walls there. Okay? The markets will have some reaction there. There's a lot of support resistance there. So from here, where you've entered, all the way to here, is your guaranteed profit zone. Make sense? Everyone with me so far? Uh, sir, dude, and it has to bounce off the previous pivot wall. No, it doesn't have to bounce off the previous one. As long as it's bouncing off of some wall, it gives you an indication that it's time to go long. Previous can look at this area down here. Let me show you. Big candles, and then it gets smaller and smaller, and tails coming out of the bottom, indicating there's pressure pushing north, little by little. Market slows down, and then suddenly pressure comes in massive candle it goes all the way down till here everybody in the market selling all the small traders are hitting sell 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 because they want piece of the action because they think we're headed short but when the reality is it's a false breakout it goes back up north creates this thing it's basically a way to get a better price okay at this moment if you look at it in terms of a a broker or larger players. I'm going to explain to you the, the fundamental aspects of this. Okay. If I am a broker myself, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys out of a mind of a trader and put you guys in a mind of an institution. Their 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 objective is not to make a profit. Okay? Their objective is to take your trades and run with it. And the profits are made by the by the direction they run with it. Okay, for us, 
we're trying to find the direction to make the profit. There's a difference. Okay, now take a look at this. What What is everyone's objective? Everyone in this room, there's 50 people in the room. What is your objective from this? Okay, profits. How do you make the profits? Okay, profits and pips by understanding. All you're doing is you're just making the difference between a certain price compared to the price you close. And that's how you make a profit. You're just pulling out a small chunk of the market. Now the larger players, do you think that's what they're doing? If they have $50 billion on, on the line, are they looking to make 20 pips or 100 pips out of there? No. The objective is not for them. Their objective is not to make money from the market. It's Everything that we have to give, put on the market is chimp change for them. Understand the concept of money. The money you have in your pocket is actually the money that used to be in someone else's pocket. And the cycle continues. Okay? Money itself has no value. Why do you print money to, to buy something in exchange for that money? Right? Now keep that concept in mind. Now, when these larger players move the market to a certain price, for example, they're moving the market from $1.22 to $1.25, can I, as a billionaire, go into a foreign country and be like, listen, now that the exchange rate is in my favor, I want to buy these five industries because now I have a good rate to buy them at. They're buying tangible goods because cash actually has no value. The cash that you and I trade for is because we're trapped in this mentality thinking that cash is everything. It's not. Cash was made to represent tangible goods. For example, gold, oil, um, real estate. These are where the real money is. This is why money is printed. You need to understand this concept. Okay? So, going back to that, that's the fundamental aspect of it. Understanding what how the markets work, why there is a market to begin with, why is there a financial market, okay? Now, take a look at this. At this point, what's happening is, how long has this downtrend been going? How long has this downtrend been going? This is a one-hour chart. It's been going for quite some time, right? Okay, so let's say this uptrend is here, and then the downtrend started. 1 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours. 7 hours into it, how many of you guys are actually going to sell? In fact, all of you guys will start selling. Because you're like, oh, the trend is down, so the trend is your friend, uh, start selling. Everyone starts to sell. Sell, 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 sell. If there's so many sell orders here, what is the way to start taking them out? Okay? Once this thing breaks down here, additional mass of sellers come in. You push it back north, all the sellers are starting to uh, are, are taken out. As the market moves slightly up to here, more people are selling because they're assuming this is a temporary retracement like this green candle. More people sell. You push it even further. Take everybody out. Does it make sense? This is called panic trading. The market moves in a certain direction slowly. The trend will always be slow. And then you will have one big shot that the market moves. And then the trend will continue again slowly. Okay? That one big shot is called panic trading. Okay? You see how market moves slowly all the way down and then boom, one shot north? and then slowly all the way down again, the trend resumes. But at this point, everyone's buying again. When it actually goes down slowly and more and more people start buying, it just keeps taking them out, keep taking them out. Because people, are, at the moment this thing happens, people get into the feeling that the markets are moving fast, the markets are moving fast. Everyone starts to place their money. Okay, 
So have patience. Have patience when you're trading. Don't get so aggressive. Don't jump in because you see the market moving. Okay, another rule of thumb. Never trade on moving data. Whatever happens, wait for the candle to close and open on the next candle. Never trade on moving data. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a look at uh, another pair. For example, let's take a look at pound. Okay, take a look at this. Oh, I wonder why pound is reacting over here. Look how much strength there is here. Two levels over here. Okay, if you even go back to the fourth day, even the fourth day level has pinpoint held it. Take a look at that. It holds the market. It holds the market. Okay, um, so Shield will go into trend continuations in a whole different day. Uh, we don't have time to look into... Um, trend continuations to then unfortunately all right um, let's go further back now and um, let's take a look at some things I want to explain to you guys one more technique that uh, I probably haven't taught in any of my other um, webinars all of you guys have come out here with your time I'm gonna teach you guys one more little technique how many of you guys know what is a railroad track What is a railroad track? Murray, you know, Murray, you're part of my conference room on Forex Watchers, you know. Um, let's see, who else? Okay, Ken, you know, uh, Atsushi, you know, not heard of, okay. So th th there is a mixed, mixed results here in terms of who knows railroad tracks and uh, who doesn't know. Okay, so let's look at what is a railroad track. Now just think about that word, railroad track. Okay, it has two lines going side by side, right? Okay, now let me explain to you. Something like this is what we call a railroad track, where you have a line like this, and then you have a line like this. Okay, everyone understand why the words are called railroad tracks? Okay, so I'm telling you here, I'm teaching you guys something new, right? It's, it's gonna, I'm, I'm adding to your nonsense. I'm, well, by what I'm saying is I'm adding you railroad tracks. It looks like tracks, yes. What is actually a railroad track? Remember, everything comes down to the basics. Literally everything. You see the railroad tracks right here? Okay, what day is this? 21st January 21st January railroad tracks if you look on the uh, now higher time frame well, what was it 21st January okay on a higher time frame we still have railroad tracks right okay let's move on a higher time frame the daily chart ah now what do we have here Railroad tracks are nothing but exhaustion candles from a higher time frame, okay, or exhaustion candle lookalikes. That pattern is actually this pattern on a higher time frame. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Take a look at this one right here, an exhaustion candle on a higher time frame. Let's move down to the four hours. Here, what is this right here? Railroad tracks. See, people in the Forex market have this tendency to rename everything and teach you all this bogus nonsense again and again and again. We're just renaming everything. CCI, uh, RSI, um, MACD. What is all this nonsense? It's all the same thing. It all comes down to the basics. You know? Your pivot lines. What are your pivot lines? Okay, according to what I see over here, on my one hour charts, I see that this area seems to hold support uh, resistance here. Uh, this area seems to hold here. Huh. An area over here seems to be holding. Okay, let me insert my pivot points. Where is my pivot points? Well, what do you know? Take a look at this area. Is it the same? 
take a look around this area. Everything comes down to the basics. Every indicator you can possibly think of on Earth comes down to the basics. Okay? People just have a tendency to rename, repackage, and resell things for no reason. Okay? So, remember, stick to the general knowledge of what the market's trying to tell you. Understand the flow of the market. Okay? So, what have we learned today? Exhaustion candles. Can um, someone give me criteria number one to recap? What is criteria number one for exhaustion candles? Doesn't matter, any order. Tell me one of the criteria. Trend, very good. Okay, criteria number two. Okay, tail sticks out. Very good. Criteria number three. Okay. The candle must be bigger than the previous candle, correct? Final criteria, criteria number four. Body must be inside the previous what? Yes, inside the high and low of the previous candle. Okay, if any of these criteria are wrong, what do you do? Okay, you don't trade. If you have a doubt about the exhaustion candle, what do you do? Good. <laughs> you eat. <laughs> okay. Now, where must your exhaustion candle appear to give you strength and give you confirmation that uh, this is a good exhaustion? Yes, on your pivot lines, bouncing off of a pivot. Okay, what is your guaranteed profit area? Okay, next pivot. Now, does the next pivot have to be from today's pivot or could it be? Okay, there you go, sir, dude. Closest pivot from the last three days. Very good. Okay, we have 15 minutes remaining. Let's do some examples. We'll clear it up and then you guys will get an idea and I will show you guys where we have a group for the pro trading strategy on Urban Forex so you guys can come in and just simply practice, you know? We have a whole group there. We have examples and everything. So you can just come there and practice. All right, let's take a look uh, at another pair. Somebody give me a pair, any pair, doesn't matter. All right, Kono, thanks for attending. Euro yen. Let's take a look at euro yen. Okay, somebody pick a date. What date do you want? Third of January. Let's take a look. Third of January. Where is my third of January? Okay. We're on third of January. You see any exhaustions at all? Nope. No exhaustions there. Any other day. Okay, should we, should we check the recent week on um, any of our, uh, um, our our charts for any pair? Let's check our recent week to see what, what recently has happened. You know, was there any exhaustion candles and stuff like that? Now take a look at this. The reason why those criteria exist is to save your life. At this point, whoever actually went long got burned out badly. This is why we say the exhaustion candle must be bigger than the previous candle. The previous candle is way too big. There's a lot of pressure coming into the market. Okay, understand and feel the market. Okay, don't just look for clues to uh, for the market to tell you buy and sell, buy and sell. No, it's it's not a signal service. Read the market, you know. So stop looking for clues and actually look and trying to understand the market. Okay, we have a also an exhaustion here that uh, worked out, but not a clear exhaustion. When in doubt, leave it alone. Okay, let's move further back. Let's see anything we have in this week. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing. 
let's take a look at uh, a different pair. Okay, Philip says 25th of February. Okay, which pair? You want to do Euro USD, Bert, Philip? Is that the pair you guys want to look at? 25th of February, Bert, Euro USD. Okay, 25th of February, Euro USD it is. Let's take a look. 25th of February, over here. Okay, we have an exhaustion here. Previous candle, too big, leave it alone. Markets, next candle, um, nothing there. The, the tail on the bottom is way too big. The body actually looks smaller than the bottom tail. Okay, nothing there. Uh, Yaha, GBP, Japanese Yen today. Let's take a look at Pound Yen today. Okay, I don't see anything on Pound Yen today. I think you're on a different uh, time frame. But, take a look at Pound Yen yesterday. Here's a trick question. Do I go long here? Yes, this video is recorded. No problem. You can watch it on YouTube probably in the next 48 hours. Okay, and again, those of you who are watching this video, please um, share it. You're welcome to share it, of course. Um, and do like the video and share your feedbacks. Okay, it's not bouncing off of a pivot. This, that, okay, okay. Okay, so step one, it's not bouncing off of a pivot. Step two, your profit potential, it's right there. It's too close. Very dangerous. So you don't trade something like that. Always remember, try to find out if you can pull out a risk to reward. Okay. Now, the reason why I've developed the system in such a way where you see your profit before you see your entry because of your uh, guaranteed zone is because this is something I was talking about with my conference room members at Forex Watchers today. If you do not have your exit before you enter, the trade is already in a loss. Okay. Again, if you do not have your exit before you enter the trade, that trade is in a loss. Okay. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, day after tomorrow. You're going to get hit badly. Remember this concept. You enter for a reason, exit for a reason. But get those ready before you enter. Okay. Pound. Please check. Okay. Let's take a look at pound. What day? What day you want me to check on pound? Recent week? Nothing that I see in the recent markets. No exhaustions. Okay. Uh, Naveen, I stuck with the two trade there and I have no idea how to close it. Um, well, <laughs> you need to have a, a, a exit plan ready. Yaha, which trades are you in? Um, sir, dude, Naveen, a news release candle with the same criteria cannot be taken, right? It doesn't matter. Um, whether it's technical analysis or fundamental, it does not matter. As long as you have all your criteria matching, you're okay. Because chances are, your, your news releases are nothing but these large candles that show up. And all you're doing with these large candles, you're breaking large supports and levels of support and resistance. That's it. Okay. And on our next pro trading strategy webinar, I'm going to teach you guys some more patterns. Not just the exhaustion candle, but another pattern just that's uh, more into... Um, uh, trend continuation. Here's a little pattern here, a little exhaustion here. Don't know if uh, it bounced off of, of a pivot line, but there is one there. Let's check. Let me put in some uh, 60 weeks or something. There we go. It didn't bounce off anything, but it went up to the guaranteed zone for sure. But there's nothing to confirm that it's bouncing off of something. So leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Uh, non-farm payroll. Okay, that's maybe okay. Maybe one news like that. Non-farm payroll. Avoid it. I think I think if you still trade it, you should be okay if there's an exhaustion. But otherwise, avoid it. That's a that's the one that's a little bit crazy. Everything else, I wouldn't worry too much. Do we avoid the correlation concept? Okay, for those of you who know correlation, 
correlation has shifted from the US dollar to Japanese yen pairs. Okay, those of you who like to trade in batches, drop the US dollar. The US dollar is no longer the currency with the center of attention. It's the Japanese yen. All the money is flowing out of the Japanese yen. Okay, it's been extremely strong lately. Here's another thing, take a look at this. Um, how many of you guys have attended my pro trading strategies or seen my pro trading strategy videos from a long time ago, the one that's for two hours long? Okay, me, me, me. Okay, so there's a lot of you guys, right? I'm gonna explain to you one thing. Take a look at some of these uh, yen pairs. When did we have, um, where is my conference room? Here we go. Oops. Does anyone remember when we had the, the tsunami? How do you say Japanese yen, Naveen? JPY, uh, JPY is Japanese yen. Um, Ninja, I'll get you the video, not to worry. It's uh, just go to youtube.com forward slash urban forex or just type pro trading strategy on YouTube. It, it'll be there. It's the one with the highest comments and feedbacks and likes. It's over there. Um, okay. Okay, March 2011. All right, take a look at this. Okay. March 2011. Where is March 2011? Do, 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 do. Okay. March 2011. This scenario happened. Okay. In the Japanese yen. Okay. At this particular moment, there was a tsunami. The Japanese yen started getting weaker. And then suddenly, strength came in. Okay, the strength came in pretty much because one week after that, the Japanese yen, uh, the economy basically said that uh, the government said we're going to pump unlimited funds into the stock market as much as needed. Okay, everybody assumed that whenever the scenario happened, that's when the weakness took place. Okay, yes, this little thing that you are considering, you're probably like, okay. This is probably because of what happened in the market, you know, somewhere this little dip in rise. Okay, this is all psychological based. Okay, again, what I told you guys is paperwork needs to be processed. Okay, if if I'm, I have a fifty million dollar house, and it gets burned down to the ground, which insurance company is gonna be like? While it's burning, they write me a check and say, here's your money. They cannot. Once it's done, the investigation, this and that, they need to check everything. Then, once they do that, if they have to pay me that $50 million, they need authorization from their manager, senior managers or whatever, file the paperwork, put it into accounting, put it into all of these processes, and then say, uh-huh, six months later, here's your check. You know, it's not a small amount. The bigger the amount, the longer it takes. Remember that concept. Bigger the amount, the longer it takes. So, if the, if the economy starts to get ruined in Japan and all these big players have to start pulling out their money, their trust from the from J Japanese markets, are they going to call up Japan and be like, close down my company, send all my money back? It takes time. It takes time. And that is probably one of the reasons why we're seeing this massive effect now. And it's not a small move, but it's a large move. Take a look how strong this is. It takes time. Remember, paperwork must be processed. Okay, everything you see on the news, psychological. Okay, what about market makers? Remember, market makers are simply like brokers. They're looking to just collect orders. Okay, remember one concept, like I told you guys in the beginning. Okay, as a trader, we look to make profit from the buying and selling. As a market maker, you're looking to make profit, not from the market, but from whatever you have to give me as uh, to put money into my brokerage account. You move to the next level, and then you have these bigger players where they don't care a rat's butt about the markets. They just care as what price can they get 
on the currency so they have a good exchange rate to go into these foreign countries and buy whatever they need to buy at wholesale prices. Make sense? And that's how the, the money is being pushed around, up and down, this and that. And you will never see the forex market overnight go bankrupt. You know, there, there's no such thing because governments are involved, central banks are involved. Okay, it's not a corporation where the CEO gets up one day and says, hey, there's more to life, so I'm closing down my company. I want to go to the beach. It doesn't work like that with the government. So you need to understand these processes. Okay, so the, understand, well, when you understand this process, you need to understand where you stand in this entire process. And you need to understand that I am a speculator which means I am looking to make money from the swings in the market. The smaller the time frame I go into this, I'm not coming out alive. If I scalp, I'm the fastest one to die. Understand that. Okay? I also taught this earlier in my Forex Watchers conference room is the people who are passive traders earn the most amount of money compared to people who are active traders. Because passive traders don't have any emotions. They come in, they place some trades, and they leave. They don't have time. They don't have time. They have their own personal life to take care of. If you come in as an active trader, if you place a trade based on the four hour charts or the, or the one day chart or the daily charts, you're gonna finger that thing. You're gonna keep pressing buy and sell until you really uh, you know, kill that trade somehow because the markets are moving in front of your eyes and you keep messing with it. So if you can trade on a higher time frame, become passive. That's one advice you want to take from this, this webinar is try to be passive as much as possible. If you're active, then enjoy the movement. Then enjoy the thrill of the market. Don't try to make a million dollars overnight. Enjoy it. Okay. You're not going to make much money as passive traders. You'll make less money. But enjoy the swings and the flows and what you're actually, why you're in the Forex market is the thrill because every day is different. It's not like a job where every day is the same thing. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Meaning setting, take profit and staple, uh, stop loss. Uh, take profit and stop loss. If you're doing singular pairs, I would, I, would, I would do that. Remember, if you're putting your stop loss and take profit on higher time frames, um, the brokers are not sitting there to take you in or take you out. Okay? It's a little bit too far for them. But if you're there and your take profit is 10 pips above and your stop loss is 2 pips below, like, dude, come on. Give me the money. I'll take it. Okay? I know most of this recorded, Naveen, uh, could you send the link? Sorry about that. Yeah, Linda, no problem. Um, it's going to be on YouTube in the next 48 hours. And once it's available, I will uh, I'll send a link out to everybody on Urban Forex. So better possibilities on trading with Japanese yen pairs includes pair than the standard seven pairs you're talking about in previous videos. Yes. So the shift has happened. The US dollar is no longer the hot shot. Now take a look at this. Um, Swiss franc daily chart. Which direction? in the last one month. Okay, down. Uh, Linda, no problem, no problem, it's okay. Um, like I said, I'll uh, get you the link. If you don't get it, just message me, I'll get it to you. Okay, oh, one more thing for you guys. Um, try to avoid messaging me on Urban Forex because I cannot get to it on time. Any question you ask me, everyone in the in, the con in UrbanForex.com can answer. So please just openly ask in a discussion or in the chat room. People are more than happy to help you in, in urbanforex.com. Everyone's really friendly. Nobody gives you a vague answer like, oh, how do you do this? They don't say, just trust the markets. Nobody says that, you know. Everyone's willing to help you here. So, um, okay, the markets are headed down on uh, Swiss franc, a Japanese yen, pound, Japanese yen, daily charts, last month also headed down. Take a look at CAD-Yen daily charts the last month also
headed down. So you can see the yen pairs are correlating. They're all doing the same thing for the last month, month and a half. Okay. How's the FX mentor? What is the FX mentor? Okay, so should we be revising the pairs um, that we should use the basic strategy? The, the pairs would be the best on, uh, if you're using correlation, use it on Japanese yen pairs. If you're trading single trades, then uh, go on to um, the regular pairs. Uh, Atsushi, um, for those of you guys who are in the internship program, we're going to put you into the conference room because I'm, I really am unable to um, get to the internship program on time and staff is really limited in our side. So everyone on the internship program is now going to be in our conference rooms on Forex Watchers. So congratulations, you guys are in the thousand dollar program. Okay, all right. Um, you were saying about inviting FX mentors. Yes, yes, uh, I, will, I will start to invite them. But we need to make sure what type of mentors we invite. I think we're gonna. St I'm starting a blog also on uh, Forex Watchers where we're gonna share educational information that's actually useful. I will. I will try to look at them myself. Um, that is, is this just a basic thing re remanufactured and selling again? You know, or is it something useful? Okay, everything comes down to the basics. Always remember that. Um, Armando, so do you use weekly and monthly pivot points? No, only daily. Uh, Naveen, Forex Watchers is a paid site. Yes, yes. The for the forecast on Forex Watchers is free. It's my contribution to the Forex world. I've made it free. So enjoy yourselves. We've been voted uh, the sixth most read analysis on FX Street, um, and uh, we just keep being featured there. So. We no longer charge for the forecast. You know, we've done our part. We've got the recognition. Now, enjoy. We'll, we'll share it openly. All right. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, remember everything that I've taught you. If you do not remember, no problem. It's going to be on YouTube. If there's any questions, everyone on urbanforex.com knows the pro trading strategy. You're welcome to just join and openly ask questions okay there is a group let me show you where the group is on uh, urban forex the moment you join in towards the bottom on your left you will see the groups here with 229 members that's pro trading strategy just click on that and um, once you click on that give it a second while it loads I have really high-speed internet here <laughs> give it a second it opens up you can join the group submit your um, screenshots, any questions, maybe you have a better indicator, maybe you want to refine the strategy with some techniques you have, please do share. You know, everything is, is important. So here we go, we have, you know, multiple discussions in here, batch trading robots and all of that stuff to help you. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it today. I thank you all for attending and uh, I will... See you guys next Wednesday for our next uh, webinar. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. Take care, guys. Have a good evening.